And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hello, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska Aviation Weather Outlook on this Thursday, April 17th. And this outlook will be for Friday, uh, Thursday into Friday to round out this uh, work week. But looking at the maps, uh, as of at least uh, this Wednesday, we have low pressure located right in this area here, just south of the lower portion of the Alaska Peninsula. This low is going to have a tendency to just kind of sit and spin here the next couple of days. Frontal system out ahead of it, creating strong uh, easterly winds along areas of the western go gulf, especially Kodiak Island, the entrance of Cook Inlet, on up into the mountains there along the lower or portion uh, of the southwest mainland and the, the Alaska Peninsula. An impulse uh, energy of the low is going to ride northward and uh, pass up to just east of uh, Wrangell Island as we go uh, over the next uh, day or so. And as a result, as that works north, we'll still see areas uh, of snow, accumulating snow, maybe mixed with a little bit of rain, uh, especially uh, for portions of, uh, oh, the southwest coast. But again, visibilities at times will be lowered with lower ceilings, light to moderate snow, uh, areas of it will here along the west, southwest, all the way up to the northwest coast. Interior, different story. We have a big ridge of high pressure sitting here over northwest Canada bringing the panhandle uh, VFR conditions extending up into the central eastern interior, areas of the southeast, much warmer daytime temperatures. So as a result, uh, we expect better conditions there. So looking by Thursday afternoon, we still have what's pretty much the storm track and a stalled out frontal boundary. And uh, we'll have pockets of uh, IFR conditions east side of Kodiak Island along areas of the southwest coast. Uh, extending up uh, into near Nome and out over the western Norton Sound through the Bering Strait. Meanwhile, again, generally VFR conditions expected across the central eastern interior, all of the panhandle. And on Friday morning, you can see the delineation here where the frontal boundary is. It's along this uh, area that we find uh, IFR conditions extending all the way from uh, east side of Kodiak Island uh, across parts of the Alaska Peninsula, particularly on the Pacific facing side. And then again, uh, areas of the southwest coast, Nunavik Island, all the way on up through the Bering Strait, and then curling back around to just along and off of the northern Arctic coast. Friday afternoon, still not much change. We still have this high pressure ridge nudging into the uh, central eastern mainland. So we expect Extensive VFR conditions across this area, much the mainland, but again, IFR conditions linger, areas of the southeast Bering Sea. There's another front way off to the west there that could uh, bring IFR conditions southwest there of the western Aleutians. So, pass conditions on Thursday, Anatovic Pass, MVFR in the morning becoming VFR. Same thing, Attigan Pass, some MVFR conditions, VFR otherwise. Further south and west, Lake Clark and Merrill should generally hang on to some MVFR conditions. You're having an easterly flow uh, coming up that portion of the Alaska range. Uh, south of there, south of Lake Clark, uh, some IFR conditions are likely lingering there through the mountains. And then Rainy Pass, generally MVFR conditions on Thursday. As you get further east, drier air, the influence of that high pressure ridge. Windy Pass, VFR conditions, but we are gonna have gusty winds around the Alaska range. I'll show you that in the turbulence map. And then Isabel, VFR conditions eastward through Mentasta Pass, down across the Copper River Basin, Tanita Pass, VFR conditions. A, a lot of sunshine, much uh, more in the way of milder temperatures, some areas, 50s to near 60 degrees in the uh, east central interior. Portage, MVFR conditions becoming VFR. And then, of course, the panhandle and up there at the north end, Chilkoot and White will see VFR conditions prevail. So the freezing levels, at the surface, dip down over into the lower bearing just north of the Aleutians, come back up along the southwest coast. That's why parts of the southwest here, that uh, the Yukon Valley, that have any lingering precipitation, there could even be a little bit of a mix of rain, uh, but the snows, uh, especially further north, uh, will be tracking that way with a, that impulse of low pressure riding northward up through the Bering Strait. Back here, though, across the central, in eastern interior, northwest Canada, we find the ridge of high pressure exerting itself, so freezing levels are higher aloft. Uh, in excess of 6,000 feet uh, along the Tanana Valley and up into the Northwest Territories, Yukon, and e even uh, areas the Panhandle, we have freezing levels on the order above 4,000 feet. 
Looking at icing threat where there is precipitation, there could be some icing above 8,000 feet along this frontal boundary, uh, western gulf, if there's any showers. But further west, along the stalled frontal boundary, pretty good likelihood of some uh, icing, moderate icing above 6,000 feet as you get further north along uh, Seward Peninsula on up into the northwest portion, Western Brooks Range, uh, above three, 4,000 feet, and then another area back out toward, way out toward uh, the far southwest portion of the Bering Sea above 6,000 feet. So the upper level jet stream pattern cl clearly shows this ridge of high pressure. This ridge just goes like that. That's the upper ridge, strongest wind flow, kind of the storm track right here along the west coast. Uh, upwards of 110, 150 knots. Mid-level's 9,000 feet, 700 millibars. Strong mid-level winds coming in off the lower uh, gulf, into the western gulf, especially entrance of Cook Inlet on up into that western arm of the Alaska Range that begins to creep down the northern part there of the Alaska Peninsula. And then a broad south-southwest flow along the west side of the state, generally 35 to 45 knots. But within this area, the Kenai uh, back toward uh, Lake Iliamna, we're looking at uh, wind 60, 75 knots at that level. Bring it down to 3,000 feet closer to the surface. Here's a low circulation. The one that's low is going to kind of sit here, but a piece of energy riding northward. So that'll allow uh, precipitation to expand northward tonight into Thursday morning. But this belt of stronger winds obviously will lead to surface turbulence because we have winds 60, 70 knots there through uh, the entrance of Cook Inlet on up into and uh, just north of uh, Lake Iliamna. So the turbulence uh, factor here for Thursday is uh, isolated severe turbulence likely around Lake Iliamna extending out in the northern Shelikoff Strait, uh, Kamishak Bay into the entrance of Cook Inlet, north side of Kodiak Island, surface to 4,000 feet. We have a broad area of moderate turbulence across the eastern Aleutians, uh, surface to 4,000 feet. And then Alaska Range with that southerly, southeasterly flow, there are some stronger winds uh, and we're expecting turbulence surface to 10,000 feet to areas of moderate turbulence along, especially central, central western Alaska range. And then further north, uh, east uh, there of the Seward Peninsula, up through the middle Yukon Valley surface to 4,000 feet.